Oh, it's my turn. So let's put me back on the spotlight, not Michael Sheffrin, I mean, Michael Richker. There we go. Hi, everyone. Friends, we have a very special treat this weekend as we get to celebrate and spend this Shabbat with Rabbi Karen Kadar, who is one of the leading rabbis in the reform movement in the Central Conference of American Rabbis and uh, throughout North America. And she was supposed to be with us uh, for this whole weekend and enjoy this Florida sunshine. And sadly, uh, the Omicron surge just came at the very wrong time uh, when we had to make the decision a few weeks ago. So she is joining us through the magic of Zoom and with us, and there she is sharing the spotlight. So before I introduce her though, I want to offer some special thanks. So the thanks go to first uh, our sponsors, to Arnie and Dee Kaplan, our principal sponsors of the Kaplan Scholar in Residence Program. We thank you for the gift each year of bringing a wonderful scholar from all over the country, they come to us. Uh, thank you. Thank you to Charles Peck and family uh, for being co-sponsors. And thank you to our fantastic committee with new chairs of the committee, Ellen Klein and Wendy Wicks. Thank you for scouring the land to find the very best of scholars. And uh, they were absolutely discriminating, like in a good way, discriminating, uh, and would have only the best for our uh, most sincere congregation. And they did just that uh, and extended the invitation to Rabbi Kadar, and she uh, accepted most graciously. Her principal program is tomorrow morning, and that's at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Um, and you can attend hopefully through Zoom, the same Zoom address or uh, on live stream, but it's interactive. So we want you to come on Zoom. Tomorrow morning is her full program. But everyone on this Friday night, uh, we're going to get a little piece of the goodness that is Rabbi Karen Kadar. Uh, she is the senior rabbi of a historic congregation uh, in Chicago. She is famous for her poetry and most especially for her liturgy, uh, the prayers that she has written featured in the principal prayer books of the reform movement uh, and recited literally by millions uh, each year uh, who use uh, our prayer books. And now this Shabbat, she is with us. It is with great pleasure that we invite her to unmute and welcome with us tonight, Rabbi Karen Kadar. Thank you, Rabbi. What an introduction. Wow. And thank you so much for having you having me in your community. When I wasn't able to come to Sarasota, I uh, pivoted, which I think should be the title of these last two years. How have we successfully pivoted? And I am here at a friend's house in Arizona. So I share the sunlight along with you. But we do have people here from our congregation in Chicago. So I do want to say hi to Steph Pinsky, who came online to visit your community and is already texting me saying how she wants to join. And Terry Archentar, my past president and dear friend who is actually on Zoom here with you. They heard all about how wonderful your community is and started to already infiltrate. And so I'm really pleased about that. And as I came on, of course, I saw the Meltzers who are dear friends and the Winers who are dear friends, uh, and, and Bob, I didn't know that you lit Schmeckler, I didn't know that you lived there, um, and it was so great to see your face here on Zoom. You have incredible rabbis, an incredible community. Wendy and Ellen, you are a class act um, in all the arrangements, uh, and Dan, thank you for the music. And we could go on and on and on because, uh, Rabbi, you are so gracious in saying thank yous. Uh, I, I texted, uh, one of my congregants and said, I could have learned from you uh, how, how beautiful and gracious this community is. So we have a few minutes together tonight and we have a much longer time tomorrow. Um, and in this few minutes tonight, well, about 15, 20 minutes, 
I'd like to talk about three things that really have been driving our congregation for a number of years and kind of took a spotlight in these last couple of years. And that is faith and courage and wisdom. In fact, in our congregation, we have a beautiful piece of real estate right in the middle of the synagogue, which we call our village center. And they have large arches. And in the village center, we have the words faith, courage, and wisdom. Don't you think that's what we needed? How could we have possibly gotten along without finding our equilibrium with our faith, without courageous living, without the ability to discern and go deeply into wisdom? One of the central prayers that we have in our prayer book is the Shema, listen, listen, listen. But the second word of the Shema is Yisrael, listen, Yisrael. And as you might remember, as your rabbis and teachers teach you all the time, as you yourselves have taught throughout the years, Yisrael was once Jacob. And a long, long time ago, Jacob at war with his brother Esau was about to see him after several years of being separated. And Esau had come with him with 400 men. And Jacob was sure that this was war. And Torah stops the narrative and puts a close-up in this most extraordinary moment of Torah, where Jacob is by the river. And he lays upon the river with his head perhaps upon a rock. And suddenly in the middle of the night, in the darkness of the night, and we know the time of day, which is so unusual for Torah, suddenly a stranger comes to him, or perhaps it's an angel, and they wrestle back and forth, back and forth. This wrestling becomes the epic story of our people. And Jacob says to him, who are you? What is your name? And the man, the stranger, or perhaps an angel, does not answer him. And they continue to wrestle back and forth and back and forth. And at some point, Jacob gets injured on his leg, on his thigh. In fact, those of us who keep kosher don't eat this part of the animal as if to remember from generation to generation, this is the part that is injured. Because sometimes when you wrestle with God, God, wrestling is tricky business and you are injured. And Jacob says to the man, just tell me who you are. And the angel says nothing. And then suddenly, the sun begins to rise, as Emily Dickinson would say, a ribbon at a time. And the angel says to him, I'm not going to tell you who I am, but I will tell you who you are. From now on, you are Yisrael, no longer Jacob, meaning one who wrestles with God. Friends, this saves Judaism for us. We are not the children of Abraham, or the children of Isaac. We're not even the children of Jacob. We are the children of Israel. We are wrestlers with God. We struggle and confront the difficulties and the conflicts in life. This last couple of years has taken us down. It's as if our whole community, the entire world is in a perpetual time out in the corner, asking us to find a resilience. We have wrestled with God. And if we've ever had to shake our hands into the universe and say, what is this about? We are in good company. Shema Yisrael, listen, you wrestlers with God, our prayers tell us. Adonai Eloheinu, there is a God who is our God, the beingness and beauty of the universe. This is what it means to have faith during this time. Not to be blind, God forbid, Judaism does not teach us about blind faith, but rather 
to surrender those parts of our lot living that is beyond our control, to take care of business and do what it is that we need to do to, to extend the hand in kindness, to feed the hungry, which your community is so beautiful in doing, to ease the pain of the stranger, to pursue peace, to pursue justice, to take care of what is in our realm and then release the rest to take ourselves out of the center of our being and tether ourselves to something greater than ourselves, even if that tethering is a wrestling. That's what it means to have faith in our community. To say, you know, I know what I know and there's so much that I don't. And I breathe through that great mystery, that great unknown, praying that I am held and somehow guided. And we come to the second word, word that I want to present this evening, and that is courage, because that kind of surrender takes courage. It takes courage to live. If there's anything that we've learned or needed to teach or somehow dig deep inside of us, it is to find some kind of resilience. And though we have been put into this extended time out, look at us here from Chicago, from Arizona, from places in Florida, all coming together as a resilient community saying, you're not going to take me down. The difference between a person who is defeated by their circumstance and one who is not, is not the circumstance of their lives. We all know people who complain and complain and complain and you listen to the details of what their story is and you say, really? You think that's trouble? <laughs> that's not trouble. And then we know people who say, you know what? That's okay, I've been blessed, but you listen to their story. And listening to their story, you say, oh my goodness, I don't know how you got through it. The difference between people in this world is not the circumstance, but it's that they wake up in the darkest part of their night and they say, you're not going to get me. You are not going to get me. I will not give in to despair. I will not give in to despair. So we have faith, which is often a struggle, which asks us to tether ourselves to something greater than ourselves, to a transcendent oneness and beauty, to love. And we have courage, because somehow we have found the resilience to look upon that beauty and not to give in to the cynicism to believe in the power of community, to believe in the power of our spirit, faith, courage. And the third word I wanna to present tonight is wisdom. What is wisdom? You know, I'm not sure that I know. I search for a sense of equilibrium, a footing that will teach me to live a life that has greater depth and greater wisdom, what I do know is that wisdom is a discernment. Shema Yisrael. Listen, our prayer is telling us. Listen, even though the listening is a struggle. Listen to the quiet from within. Separate the noise and the fear that we all live in and go deep, deep deep into the silences of our hearts and our souls. Trust your heart. I look around this screen, and though I don't know you specifically, I know this, that you have within you a deep knowing. And the, mad, the, the extent to which we can push away our fear, we can enter into that deep knowing, that discernment, that wisdom and trust it. 
trust what it is that you know to be true. And what is that? Shema Yisrael, that we are called upon to struggle, to listen, to abide by an abiding faith that is our legacy from generations past, to surrender into the softness and the beauty of this world, to not give into fear, faith, courage, and wisdom can be the cobblestones of our path as we try to navigate this oh so difficult and complicated life. And you know what all, all else fail, fails? I will quote your congregant Marjorie, <laughs> who inspired us at, with her very being at the beginning of the service, whose blessing said to this community, just live in peace and harmony. When all else fails, let's just try to live in peace and harmony. Faith, sure, it's a struggle. Courage, absolutely. We can find the resilience within our heart. Wisdom, crawl into your quiet places and believe what you know to be true. And that is the prayer that comes after Shema. They are hafta et Adonai Elohecha. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And this we shall teach to the children. Because if they know anything else, that is love, 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 peace, harmony, faith, courage, wisdom. Thank you, everybody, for giving me a moment tonight and welcoming us to this incredibly beautiful and kind and joyful community. I see so many hands clapping and faces smiling and hearts that have been touched. Thank you, Rabbi Kadar, uh, for those beautiful, beautiful words. Uh, we are so grateful for your Torah, uh, the depth of your passion, uh, and the poetry that you shared with us tonight. Um, that was just inspiring. Uh, friends, we are not finished by any means with Rabbi Kadar. I want to invite you to join us tomorrow morning at 10 for her main presentation, uh, which is, I believe, called The Bridge to Forgiveness, um, a bridge that we can all walk that I'm sure will be inspiring and useful for all of us. So please join us tomorrow at 10. And again, thank you, Rabbi Kadar, for, for bringing some Torah into our night. That was just meaningful and needed. Thank you. <laughs>